आज की ताजा खबर बेंगलुरु में रहने वाले लू और अमेरिका में रहने वाले सेठ आपसे कुछ बात करना चाहते हैं संगीतकार राजस्व के साथ आपका स्वागत है दूसरी What's going on people I'm Lou and I am Sid and, and we, we are Lucid. Lucid peace cool yes okay what's up bro <laughs> I think how does it feel uh, to be doing a podcast in person again bro feel so good bro for peace yeah bro for peace yeah can see all emotions now body yeah. language everything <laughs> bro don't tell body language now <laughs> it's fat have become okay it's so okay. the same bro fuck um okay guys so today's episode we have like three lights and three cameras, cameras. and, and food laptops and some food um one camera's there one you're looking at now and the other one's here yes say hi said hello great okay <laughs> um all right so this episode's going to be called what i know breakfast <laughs> with lucid yes yeah we're going to have breakfast at 12 yeah uh, because we are a little weird like yeah. that yeah <laughs> we ordered them like 3 hours ago though yeah um, bro the setup of all these things was so hard yeah it was a pain in the ass like we just had to mod- modify my entire yeah. room a little bit That's why it looks so good now. It's yeah, it's not it's, an actual setup. Guys. Yeah. If if you guys don't think this is good, then imagine what it was like <laughs> before this. Uh, yeah. So, Sid. Yes, bro. Uh, what's India been like? I'm gonna ask you this one last time. Today. Yeah. It's been really good. I feel so good coming back home. Uh-huh. It's been what four weeks, and I've been going out with friends, meeting people. I, initially, I felt like. Uh, like staying there like all of you will be working can't meet people in the weekdays not bad people are being time for me i am important <laughs> in their lives <laughs> peace so, good feeling yeah so it's been really nice went uh-huh. on one trip to gokarna uh-huh. peaceful it's very hot though eh? but How was the trip uh, though the trip was really good again did a beach trek we uh-huh. couldn't do a deep sea uh, diving uh-huh. but the only the funniest thing out of the whole trip was my friend arjun uh-huh. garg is getting beat up by police <laughs> He got beat up by the police. Yeah. What the fuck? Okay, explain more. <laughs> so, apart from Goa, any other place, you can't sleep near the beach. Uh, like, a uh, post midnight, like at say like one a.m. or two a.m. in the morning. Oh, okay. So all my friends, like, they'd gone along with Arjun. They they was sleeping, lying down near the beach. <laughs> one police started chasing, and with like one lati hit Arjun like left hand. Right. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh. So yeah, that was too funny. This is now public information, Arjun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. so, <laughs> But um, at the same time, I think Arjun also um, released his uh, peer-reviewed journal, yeah. like some piece. So, so that's that was pretty interesting. Yeah. It's like semiconductor in uh, defense. Yeah, semiconductor okay. in defense, and uh, uh-huh. I think the Air Force published his. Uh, so good, good one on that, Arjun. Yeah. Though the police might beat you up, the army's got your back. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um so what do we what do we have for food um said Let me take the juice. It's called smoothies for the love of fruits. Mighty fi- mango. Yeah, but it's mango pineapple. Who the fuck? Yeah, I ordered this uh, well, <laughs> mango pineapple. I'm just like I was curious to uh, know what it is. I really hope it's good. Otherwise our podcast is going to go bad. <laughs> no, it's it's good. I'm pretty sure it's good. And uh you should tell us what did you order? This is a bagel. I've uh, never had a bagel. So bro, I was expecting a dosa. What the fuck? <laughs> bro, it's okay. Like dosa and all every day we eat. So <laughs> this uh wanted to be like a little bit of finger food. Uh, uh so bagel with cream cheese and some jalapenos I think. So oof. this is that. Ha. Huh. And this this is super sweet, okay? Uh huh. first of all it is a sweet. Okay. <laughs> But the second thing is that uh so today morning I went to so I play badminton yeah. every weekday. Yeah. Um and uh I have a few friends there and right. uh, one of one of the persons is a muslim. Okay. So he had Eid yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. So he gave us all uh, sweets and hey, that's so very, sweet. Yeah, so sweet. Yeah. Uh, and happy eid mubarak yeah, to eid everyone eid mubarak to happy eid mubarak that's a very interesting <laughs> way to say it. but yeah eid mubarak to everyone yes. watching cool um let's get started sid cool let's do this uh, so i have a particular agenda for today's podcast yeah i knew it <laughs> when you held the mic like this as a news reporter i'm like yeah i knew yeah, it <laughs> of course uh, i'm going to be interviewing you i have a set of questions also uh, prepared okay um, okay so 
See, I've, I've actually listed down things I want to ask you in the next podcast. That's what I, the title of that note yeah. is. Um, so the first question is, uh, you can start eating, by the way, okay. if you want to. Thanks, bro. Uh, what have you been up to in the US all these months? Run me through your routine there. Whoa, whoa. Such uh, intricate question, but okay. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to be eating while you talk. Cool, bro. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, one thing that... Uh, so I had a friend, I think I've mentioned him like in multiple episodes, uh, like that I'd, I had uh, taken his advice, uh, you know, before joining Duke. And one thing he clearly told me that was that it's very hard to get a job or an internship in the US as an international student. So you have to start very, very early. So he told me that, you know, you need to be very intentional about the stuff you do and you need to prioritize your work and stuff like that. So from the moment I start, like went to Duke, I realized I need to be, I, I, I need to plan my time really well. So that's when I started using Google calendar. I'm like every, <clears throat> every half an hour, I'm like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to mm-hmm. do this. Okay. Every half an hour. No, uh, that's just like an okay. exaggeration, just, uh, but exaggeration. Uh, okay, cool. yeah. So like I plan, I used to plan my whole day, like say from morning to night. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, this block of time is going to be this, 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 this right because the main thing is in the us like which is uh, quite different from india is uh it's your uh, schedule is fixed by you like you select the classes during what time and everything right so and like classes are not continuous the whole day Mm -hmm. like from morning to night or from morning to evening so for example one day it's just going to be one class in a day and some days it's going to be like two or three classes in a day so you have to adjust schedule your time according to that. So one, the one main thing I did that was with respect to routine is uh, making sure to have a calendar and putting down things it's like at this time I want to do this at this mm-hmm. time I want to do this at this time I want to do this, which really helped because uh, one like the main issue was before, like if I wanted to do things, I would keep them in my mind. I would do two things. Then I'd get distracted, go do something else and the day gets over. Mm -hmm. So this calendar really helped. So in terms of routine, that's one thing I did. And in terms of uh, what I did like the past eight months is one, (laughs) go to a whole new country, start a master's degree in engineering management. And to be honest, I had a different expectation of what the engineering management degree would be. But I'm really happy with what I learned because like, for for example, some courses like marketing, I thought it'll just be like ads, like, oh, how do you make a beautiful ad and something like that? Like, I did not have much idea about marketing, but then when I went, like went there, like listen to the class and stuff, I'm like, oh, it's like a whole new, uh, what perspective on marketing. Mm -hmm. So I learned like a whole new, like. Uh, perspective on how business actually works and how it's keenly related to technology markets and like psychology so yeah awesome uh, but <clears throat> apart from your google calendar what did you put in your google calendar what's your routine okay. in a day so in terms of routine <clears throat> initially i try to uh, uh, if we go back to our previous podcast, like the first season, remember it's like 5 a.m. club and all. I had to get, I used to get up at five. I tried to do that, uh, but it was very, very cold. I couldn't get up okay. at five. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, cool. It's around 6.37. And uh, first thing is get up 7.30, like do your stuff and like eight o'clock, go check LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Go check LinkedIn if there are job openings, new job openings that opened up when you're asleep because oh, okay. uh, there's the West Coast, which is three hours behind and they right. might have posted jobs when you were sleeping. So do that and then go to college, have either have breakfast at home, mom's ready-made food, I don't know how to cook or go to college, have some breakfast, bagel. <laughs> and, oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh, I had like one morning class in one day, rest of the days I didn't have a morning class. So in those days, uh, I'd go do my part time and I was a IT support consultant. So basically whatever, uh, IT people used to do in our jobs, like say, if you wanted a keyboard monitor or anything is wrong with our system, yeah, Uh was doing that peaceful job. People will come ask, uh, like 
random questions like you know my zoom is not working mic is not working please help i don't know how to print it's like mm-hmm. please help so it is a peaceful job so do that uh, so so the limit for working part time in us in college is 20 hours mm-hmm. so i had to like allocate time accordingly so like on days i didn't have classes i work more like say 6 to 7 hours and on the days i had classes i'd work for 2 hours right so that would like spread over the week and then like uh, uh, initially what i uh, starting of the semester what i used to do is uh, i used to take up all the morning slots say like so the uh, work used to start like at 8:30 so i used to take up all the morning slots so like 8:30 to 12 8:30 to 10 right. am mainly because generally people don't come at 8:30 okay. unless there are classes or uh, stuff right so i'm like i'll have the least i want to work at 8:30 <laughs> okay <laughs> so go at 8:30 finish by 12 or something then have lunch then either do assignments so what's for lunch lunch bro so duke has like the best campus mm-hmm. uh, like best best campus also but like best uh, uh like restaurants in the campus okay. okay okay so there's like one huge food court with like 8 to 10 places inside it oh yeah so there's like indian mexican italian then uh normal like like, a, like a mall's food court yes okay so it's damn peaceful and it is comparatively cheaper than uh, outside outside okay so a meal is like uh Uh, it ranges between eight to ten dollars, mm-hmm. and like the hourly pay, say like if you're working part time, is like a minimum ten point five dollars. So an hour's pay is like your lunch, which is peace. So I generally initially I was like, yeah, full healthy. I'll uh, you know those Mexican bowls which you used to get mm-hmm. in uh, California burrito. So there's another place called Sazon. I used to go there. Ha. Huh? After like. Two three weeks, I'm like fuck. I can't do this. I can't eat this anymore. Then straight went to the Indian place. Is like rice with three curries and one uh, naan or kulcha. So like ah, uh, so <laughs> yeah. So so it was like that. Like so we could mix and match. And uh, wha- so there was another place called Panera Bread, which gave free coffee. Like Sorted. if you subscribe, uh-huh. like three months free coffee. <laughs> that three months that they extended again for three months, then six months. So. basically free coffee set <laughs> yeah so that was like the thing about food and then after finishing have like uh, i i try to do like work for like say one and a half or two hours either do my assignments so all our classes it used to be like there used to be some pre reading like to uh, get to know about the topic mm-hmm. then discussion in the class and then there b- there would be like a week's assignment so there there would either be like a team assignments or individual assignments and since ours is like a business course most of the assignments were team based assignments okay because we had to learn how to work together and my god it is actually very hard to work with yeah. people if all your assignments are team based right because right. there'll be like conflicting schedules you have to schedule time some people are day people some people are night people and then some people work really well like towards the end of yeah. the assignment like when there's a deadline some people want to finish it early so what uh, all the professors used to do is before forming the teams uh, they used to create uh, ask us to create something called a team charter oh so it's very similar yeah, yeah. <laughs> so basically like a list of rules that all of us have to <laughs> adhere by and if uh, we don't then like you know come back and work on the team charter again to see what we are missing so that uh, we as a team can work together better right so yeah that's how the day would go like you know i'd have have my like part time lunch then do assignment then like some free time uh Just roam around the campus, or go eat, come back, uh, check for jobs. How far was your place from the campus? It was like, um, uh, twenty minutes by walk, ten okay. minutes by bus. Sorted. So it's like probably two kilometers. Yeah. Cool. So most of the time I'd walk. Uh-huh. So it was damn peace. Peace. So yeah, the days would go just by li- like this, and like initially, uh, because of uh, so the, e- like exams, right? Like midterms and finals. weren't really that hard but because we were from the indian education system we mm-hmm. had like literal ptsd of uh, you know of, I, uh, yeah. uh, exams yeah. where like oh shit like you know will these exams be very hard right and professors you keep like wait what 
always telling that is like hey like exams are very simple mm-hmm. don't worry about it you concentrate on what's important the actual how many, topics how many indians in your class like in out of your entire batch so in our course actually because of the pandemic like uh, 2020 batch deferred to 2021 so there were a lot of indians so okay. like i'd say like 75 to 80% were Oof. yeah so i learned more about indian diversity rather than <laughs> uh, you know international <laughs> diversity right, right. and bro like there's so much difference between bangaloreans and other people right yeah it's like people instantly get to know with like oh you're from bangalore oh yes <laughs> i i i i've felt that too <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hmm. so yeah that's about it there's like most of the time went by in uh, uh what job search Uh, doing well in the assignments because new topics like new subjects to learn and third one was networking talking to people mm-hmm. so yeah i think these three were the main things like say oh. for the first 6 7 months okay cool what did you, what what were you used to having for dinner dinner again mom's ready made ready made cook yeah. ready made food so what all ready made food did she pack and give you did it last for the entire year she sent twice like first was the time and i took it i ah. took and went the second time was she sent a package oh okay and yeah. they didn't have any customs charges and all on that packages no it was normal this thing it was like what 5000 no sorry uh, 600 rupees per kg ah so 10 oh so it's a normal delivery yeah dhl delivery yep, yep. prices so oh, that's yeah. that's this full piece stuff exactly <laughs> I'm going to do this guys when I go. <laughs> Why you can actually come in the weekend take and go. Yeah, that's sort like I'll just do something like this but yeah. but this is a good uh do legit like my mom sent pongal uh uppet uh puliyogre puliyogre gojju and uh, avlakki poha huh. all of these and like every day just put like put, put like a little a, water or something. Yeah, hot water it'll done. become yeah. <laughs> If you want a little taste there are pickles put pickle done over sorted makes sense. Yeah. Please. basically i see i like really good food but uh, i can't cook and <laughs> bro like once i tried okay it takes 60 minutes for the whole process like 20 minutes to cook food right. 20 minutes to eat 20 minutes to wash again all the food you ate will disappear it's like what is the point of eating <laughs> so i'm like no <laughs> A massive respect for people who cook yeah bro i'm not even kidding like i see my mom Yeah. Early in the morning she just wakes up, cooks and then and then goes to office after that. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know how she does it, how she pulls it off, but yeah. Yeah, she does it. Crazy. Yeah. Also, I have to say like I I was very fortunate to have friends. It's like they made like whenever they make good food they gave me. Ah, so because yes. of which I survived. <laughs> Otherwise I would have died. <laughs> That's awesome. Dude, awesome. Yeah, I was craving akki roti and one of my friends Prakriti she actually made prak- uh, what akki oh, roti and damn. gave she, like normally at home I eat like a- one akki roti with butter and pickle one akki roti with uh, curd and pickle ha, ha, ha. like uh, <laughs> full house feels I got Oh damn cool damn cool <laughs> Yeah shout out to Prakriti Yeah <laughs> <laughs> So uh said why don't you tell us about your subjects that you had uh-huh. which was your which which was the subject that you found most fascinating right. why yeah so also before yes. you answer that why don't you open and eat some food okay. first we'll taste this i yeah, hope yeah it's it's okay it's pretty really good <laughs> i mean initially it felt damn good but then like after eating the a bagel it was like a little bit <laughs> oh. uh, mm. the bagel is very good though i really like it okay guys don't buy this don't buy smoothies <laughs> I hope they don't sue us. <laughs> Why will they sue us for that? It's an opinion review. Hmm. But it's oh healthy, oh. <laughs> of course. If it doesn't taste good, it's healthy. Hundred percent natural whole food. No preservatives, no added sugar. So guys, if you guys are hey, it's not that bad, dude. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. Yeah, the bagel is really good. The cream cheese inside and all. Where's the bagel from? Where do you get bagels and all from Bangalore? Uh, so this place called Old Madras, bro. Old Madras. You just spoiled my, spoiled my chair. Sorry, bro. Okay, no problem. <laughs> uh, so it's from this place called um huh. Old Madras Bakery or something. It's near Matikere. Uh, oh. no, Sanjay Nagar. Sanjay Nagar, somewhere okay. there. Okay. Huh. Um, a lot of these kind of bread. bakery oh. bakery item stuff okay really good taste it tastes very good guys hmm hmm 
Go for it. Why? Oh, well, the question. Hmm. So, before going into Duke, I had like, I had like a clear this thing that I wanted to do product management. Like I had no this thing that I wanted to explore or anything, because I had done and. What made you choose product management? So, in twenty. Nineteen, twenty, twenty, when uh, I'm like, so my parents were like, why don't you take a two year, uh, like break in terms of doing a job and then do masters to see if you're sure you want to do a masters, which which was which made sense. I'm like cool because at the end of fourth year, I'm like I will do MS in CS or MS in EC, become software engineer, uh, develop cool as apps, uh, softwares, everything. But then six to eight months into my uh, like subject, sorry, in my job, I'm like, oh no, is this how a developer role feels like? It's like, hmm, not for me. <laughs> then I'm like, cool, what to do next? I was like, okay, cool, MBA. Then I saw. So one thing was very clear. I wanted to do it in the US. Main reason being, uh, like. I wanted to see how other cultures look like and how other people think outside of India because majority of Indians think in one particular direction. Uh, so like how people uh, like it's like there's no new perspective when you want to talk, uh, you know, uh, when you want to talk to people. So I wanted to try uh, like check that. So that was the, one of the main reasons I uh, wanted to go to US. Second one was obviously traveling, looking new places, looking at new places and stuff. So that was the thing. So then, when I was checking courses, I'm like MBA. Then there was like that, as we discussed in your podcast of road to <laughs> MBA. Like ev- everywhere, there are like four years of experience, five years of work experience. If you want to get into a really good college, and there's no point of just simply going to the US if you're not getting into a good school. So then I'm like, what are the alternate options? Then I came across this MBM degree, Masters in Engineering Management, and uh, there were these. There's this consortium or a group of colleges who made this MEM degree and like uh, set standards like how we have ICSE, CBS, CBTU and all. They also they have that and these are like leading colleges like MIT, Cornell, Duke, uh, Purdue, etc. And then I also realized one of my friends also studied at Duke. So I spoke to him. He also had the same uh, this thing that if you want to do MPA, work for four years, go apply, you have much better chances. So. I'm like, am I okay with uh, doing uh, two, working for two more years, working for four years, then doing MBA? I'm like, no, I can't. <laughs> okay, well, I'm like, what are the alternate option? I'm like, okay, cool, uh, MEM. Then I'm like, these are seven schools. I apply only to seven. That seven became a list of four. So uh, when I was going through their courses and everything, I saw what are the career options. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, there's, there was one consulting, product management, business analyst, data analyst, and some people used to go back to software engineering because they'd become a manager in software engineering. So same, mm-hmm. like same kind of career options like MBA. I'm like, okay. Then I started reading about each thing and product management uh, looked really fascinating. They're like, uh, uh, you will be in between the technology team, uh, sorry, the engineering team, the business team, you'll be in between all the teams, you get to communicate with everything. And honestly, at that time, like I did not have much knowledge. I'm like, oh, this is similar to how I was organizing different events back in okay. uh, college. Where like I, I, like I had like access to every team, give my opinions, like help them do whatever they need to do and stuff. I'm like, this makes sense. So I started reading up more about it. So that's all I had uh, in my mind. Then uh, after I got my admit, I'm like, uh, like people were talking about how getting a PM role in US is very competitive. It's in India also, it's competitive now because everyone's like, I want to become PM. So I'm like, okay, uh, I think I should do something different. Uh, if I have a chance to, uh, get a PM role in US. So what I did, uh, so first I was thinking if I can do something like that in my company, but it's a semiconductor company. And most of the hardware companies don't have PMs because, uh, they have like general managers and program managers because life cycle of, uh, right. uh, what a product in hardware is like three years. So it's very long. So there's no requirement of a product manager. So I'm like, cool. I will quit my job. 
so i quit in uh, march 2 years of uh, what is that called uh, covid no bro no? the two months of this thing uh, after you quit you have to stay for one two uh, months notice period notice period yes right. uh so yeah i was doing my notice period may i left august i had to go to duke so that time i'm like maybe i'll try to get an internship as a product manager first so at mad there was this person uh, who was working in a company was a who was working in a startup who was a product head i spoke to him he also asked me questions he gave me more clarity about what a product manager does and all that and uh, he actually took interviews we i had two interviews uh, but then i didn't get through i'm like shit leave like what can i do and the other thing was my parents were damn scared us peak covid times and mm-hmm. uh, there were there was no visa and they are like you left a nice cushy job and like what the fuck will you do for one year if uh, covid persists i'm like calm down it's okay all is well <laughs> and then uh, i remember varshni varshni happened you got into paper flight yes let's not discuss paper flight again <laughs> i'll lose my mind <laughs> all the details about paper flight is in last previous, previous podcast, podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool so yeah i interned at paper flight that's where i realized the importance of, of a, a product. product manager mm-hmm. and what he actually does mm-hmm. like product manager is not a project manager uh, or like how you, you're like a club head where you know you take care of everything and help them meet deadlines it, it requires uh, so much more about like thinking about every aspect uh, so uh, to release your product so the, the, there like when i started working with my mentor ega kumar appan and uh, other people i realized uh, how interesting it is to build a product and uh, thinking about it from multiple angles that's when i'm like cool i want to become a product manager so yeah that's why i had the clarity of right. why i wanted to become cool. a product manager the end. let's go back to the main <laughs> question which huh. is which subject did you like the most i think uh i I have two subjects mm-hmm. and it's mainly because of the professor. Uh ob- of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it, it's usually like that. Yeah. So, yeah. so one is marketing, the second one is strategy. Uh a competitive strategy in high tech companies. And uh yeah, first one is marketing because how marketing uh, how I perceived marketing was very different from what actually marketing is. Mhm. and that made me uh realize like oh damn like there's so much more to understand about marketing and how important marketing plays in a company's role and in initially like whenever i see a lot of people like a lot of companies buying logos and like uh, uh trademarking colors and stuff for like huge amounts of money 50 million dollars and all that i'm like are they crazy like why are they doing this but like marketing helped me realize that the whole point of marketing is to like imprint whatever they want like the product the company or whatever they want into like your mind so like whenever you think about that action you think about that company like for example now instead of messaging you'll be like whatsapp me right so instead of searching something on the internet you're like google it right like that's the effect of marketing which we subconsciously don't know like which we subconsciously imprint in our minds about that particular product so yeah that's why i really liked marketing and the best part about marketing was uh, there were case studies of uh, different companies in the past and uh, how uh, you know how marketing affected it so com- uh, there are like these uh, companies like kodak uh so <laughs> oh my god i'm just stuffing stuff in my mouth but i'm just gone i'm just listening though yeah yeah <laughs> so okay bro i'm feeling like movie feels like you just eat popcorn and watching movie <laughs> so yeah uh, uh there were these uh, standard cases which most of the marketing courses use like companies like kodak and how they failed and uh, netflix uh, yeah netflix amazon new york times etc so those companies like made me and like other students realize the importance of marketing and uh, 
the best part about marketing is you can't predict anything like the actions you're taking you can't tell if it'll work out or not like for example right. say a ma- a marketing deal uh, you say that we will hire uh, Roger Federer to be a brand ambassador or something like that you don't know if it'll work out right that's because this Roger Federer doesn't mean uh, your product will sell because of him so yeah it's like a huge bet that we take in marketing and that's why uh, that's what makes marketing interesting for people to start a like career in marketing so yeah what about competitive strategy so in terms of strategy you get to see like the big picture of what companies are trying to do so when you uh, go read about most of the companies there's like some set standard of patterns right uh, like for example say companies like coca cola and all they are very uh, they double down on their main product coca cola and like their whole uh, actions are towards marketing brand strategy uh, what branding etc it's like uh, they try to uh, put coca cola wherever possible like uh, another example is red bull like how would you did you ever imagine red bull which is sports drink buying a f1 sports car team right yeah right. but like that was such a good marketing move that like now so many people like more people mo- know more about red bull because of that so uh, like different companies need to uh, intentionally take one direction mm-hmm. and like looking at those patterns and then predicting uh, what they might do is like a really interesting thing for me as a student so for example we had like uh, so our uh, competitive strategies course was completely based on high tech companies so there were companies like spotify uh, the us company called block which is like a payment system and then uber and uh, yeah a few more companies like that so the good thing about them was that while we were doing the cases uh we we would have done some predictions they're like okay in the next five or uh, two three years they might do this next five years do they might do this and the most satisfying part is once you've recommended this like oh they might do this and they actually do it oh right the sense of satisfaction you get that like a, such a big company is actually thought the same way that we've thought is really amazing so one example is uh this case one case for spotify we were like uh uh Uh, yeah one of the recommendations was that spotify because of its ip of music ip it needs to be the audio engine or like the back end audio system for the metaverse like uh, okay it, they should make sure that they partner with relevant met- uh, companies who are uh, going to the metaverse and provide the ip provide like all the music side of things it should be powered by spotify okay and today morning a news article came out that roblox which is like one of the uh, right. top companies into metaverse spotify is partnering with them to provide like a metaverse kind of uh, metaverse this thing for artists to perform oh, and get all their audience uh, this thing which is powered by spotify we were like oh cool <laughs> <laughs> so Uh, like looking at the patterns of different companies and trying to see which direction they are going uh, that was really interesting for me interesting. so yeah so one more uh, interesting thing about competitive strategies was all these were live cases so one example was there was th- there's this company called peloton which is like uh, like say it's like the indian version of cult fit where they uh, provide like instructors and some of the instructors are like uh, top actors and stuff and uh, their ceo got fired and they laid off people oh wow okay they laid off like 3000 people or something ceo got fired why That, did the ceo get fired because uh, the valuation tanked from like 40 billion dollars to 9 billion dollars they were going under a loss how did that happen because <laughs> because they were a covid company <laughs> like like during covid what happened was uh, oh okay so their valuation was very high during covid and after yeah. covid it tanked so what happened was they uh, the ceo did not manage their assets really well okay 
so because they thought the company was uh, highly valued during the pandemic they thought they'll sustain the growth right but after the pandemic they didn't sustain so they had like a lot of uh, they used to they they were selling like a lot of bicycles uh like fitness bicycles mm-hmm. and they had ordered a lot like to uh, keep like uh, to keep the demand right this thing but uh, after pandemic start, no, people stopped buying got it and their they had to write off interview yeah. in, in they had to write off their inventory yeah right so because of so that was our case They're like co is fired uh, this is the thing what do you think will happen do you think will they get acquired if if you think they will not get acquired like what is their uh, usp that will make sure they will stay afloat yeah so, so i think this brings me to my next question directly yeah. so is there any kind of framework that you kind of learned that you use in your day to day life uh because for me or yeah for, for the you, company for you uh so as in uh day to day life as in not not necessarily in your own personal work uh-huh. do you like imagine like when you read news or something do you see that framework playing out in oh, your oh yes yes uh, yes so yeah talk sure. talk yeah, us yeah. through that framework and yeah. did you apply this to pentagon what what's the sorry. company's name again sorry <laughs> peloton peloton yes. did you apply any framework yeah. to play so yeah just yeah. Uh, guide us through that so the thing is there are too many frameworks okay mm-hmm. but so what our professor did was he reduced the frameworks okay and he thought is like this one important framework which is very easy to remember okay it's, and it it was developed by someone in bcg ah no wonder <laughs> mbb forever they do only this framework building <laughs> the amount of uh, effort they put in r&d is insane right, right. <laughs> and yeah so the, it's called the bcg's the uh, strategy pilot framework mm-hmm. okay and uh, it's basically like a graph where like the uh, <laughs> x axis is the malleability where uh, uh where how easy adaptability malleability means adaptability yeah same okay. how easily do the can the companies change themselves with okay. respect to the environment got it and uh, the second one is uh, how is the market is it very stable or unstable okay right so these were like the this like x axis and y axis and for the audience we can put up a picture so it's easy for them yeah to cool yeah, we can <laughs> but yeah rajas please do that <laughs> <laughs> but interesting so you're so, saying the x axis is um the company how the company changes yeah. y axis is how its environment how changes. the market is changing right. is it, is is that particular market very stable or so unstable? internal versus external external right. yes cool so based on that there were four quadrants mm-hmm. the first quadrant was like a classical company the second quadrant was the a visionary company the next was uh, adaptable and the third one was shaping so okay when you're saying first quadrant you mean the second quadrant in ja- in j- math <laughs> uh, this is very confusing <laughs> but yeah but cool. i'll tell you like how classical is like the ah, pluses right. and minuses that cool. be easier so like the, like uh, the classical quadrant is a quadrant where the the company's adapt- adaptability or the malleability is very low they don't change very easily and the market is very stable market is very stable oh yeah. so you're talking about the bottom left yes okay. correct bottom left exactly mm-hmm. so uh, i some examples of this co- uh, are like uh, say like a zip company what's a zip company zip oh okay pant zip okay, yeah pant cool. zip short zip uh-huh. like like for them like the their got it the uh, tech this, itself is yeah mature the market is exactly mature. got it is like the changes are very slow and like for them it's like cost reduction is the most important thing mm-hmm. the, uh, that's how they get more profit right and uh, visionary is the market is very stable but you are trying to invent something really new so bottom right yes okay and then uh, adaptable is uh, you as a company c- can't change that easily but the problem is the market is very unstable like uh, the customers want something uh, new like every uh, like regular period of time so you have to uh, create some uh, what like what do you say short term uh, products or short term marketing things to appease the audience mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so that's where you, you you're trying to be more adaptable to the market right. even though you as a company are not changing direction say like for example you're a watch company you're not 
uh, suddenly changing to say like a tennis ball company but in the watch company itself you are trying to do like new marketing schemes or uh, new partnerships something like that to uh, make your customers happy so that this this is adaptability top left yes cool and the last one is the top right which is shaping where the market is uh, unstable uh, you as a company uh, can change can change your uh, what uh, you have like a lot of products in your portfolio okay. which are very diversified mm-hmm. and what you're trying to do is you as a company uh, you itself are trying to shape the market okay so uh, like you you're trying to partner with different companies mm-hmm. and stuff like that for like, i uh, one example is uh, of one example i can give is uh, shit i can give so many yeah facebook or meta facebook in shaping yeah because okay. the one thing is what facebook as a company it's creating the 3d world right through right. the ar vr stuff but the other things it needs to partner is like this uh, how is it like say songs and audio and stuff right. it doesn't All have the any merchants yeah. on metaverse yeah it needs more creators it needs more like uh, companies to develop apis to integrate into the facebook metaverse so it needs like a lot of partnerships right so that's why uh, what right now its strategy is shaping like it's trying to shape the metaverse uh, uh, niche or the domain mm-hmm. of metaverse where do you think apple falls in so this is a really interesting question so i asked this to my professor also okay. like you know what do you think about apple like till now so what he says is like right now he places it as a classical company really yeah oh, okay. because it is still the majority of its revenue or majority majority of its investments are still into products that were like that have uh, that have been released like a few years ago mm-hmm. like they've made incremental changes which Got is it. good but okay. uh, they've not made like uh, they've not started something new and he says like Apple will go in a visionary uh, or shaping once it's uh, fully reveals its like electric car plans. Oh okay. Yeah. So when we say uh visionary or shaping what mm-hmm. we mean is we are going away from a said mature market that the company is working at. So say mobile phones in case of Apple mm-hmm. and it's going complete 180 into some other Exactly. Feel yep. itself. Yep. So that's when it either becomes shaping or visionary. Visionary. Until then, it's just in the classical or classical. adaptable. So now all of these food marts that are there online in right. in India today, uh-huh. Swiggy, Zomato, right, right. them trying out these things like Insta Mart and 10 right. minute deliveries. Right. These are all would put them under visionary shaping. No adaptability. So it's like this, like the first company mm-hmm. which did it. Uh, like see, Zotto. Oh. Who did it first? No, like all of these things were first done in the US. All oh, right, okay. Right. It's not like it but the market is different, right? It's India versus the US. R- right, but it's the geography, I mean. But like the plan to do it wasn't there as first, right? So like say if you take it in terms of the market, it would be visionary. Mm-hmm. Like the first company to do it. I don't know what is the first company. Maybe it's Zomato, I don't know. Yeah, I mean some some yeah. company anyways. So huh. in terms of food delivery, uh like the first company to do it would be visionary and all the other companies that 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 did the same thing after it would be uh, adaptable they're adapting to the env- environment so does us have 10 minute deliveries they uh they've tried but uh, it's not failed. working out yeah yeah i mean <laughs> it's, it's interesting that yeah. uh, they tried and it failed there and yeah. people are trying here and it's failing yeah. here it's failing in the sense that the businesses are losing a lot of money yeah so it's a very interesting thing so the 10 minute delivery thing a lot of vc uh, funds have invested into this in us and europe but most of them are crashing like all the companies are shutting down that's sad speaking about things that are going to crash it's going to be me i'm rajas i produce the podcast First part of this episode has come to an end. Second one drops next Wednesday. 